This week we're going to start looking at materials. I've loaded up a file here called Materials Lab, which will be a file that we'll use as a place to experiment a little bit with the various material types. Now for any of you who have used the Material Editor in 3ds Max know the editor is fairly complicated. There's a lot going on in the Material Editor. So I hope as we go through the various explanations today you'll see the variety of different tools that I'll use with materials. So one of the things that I'd like you to notice is here the materials that get presented to you when you create a new file and also the number of materials that you have available to you in the material editor. Here if you right click you'll notice in this menu here that you can display by default uh, this number of sample windows or go to the higher 4x6 sample windows and I recommend that you do this just so that you can see more of your materials all at once and if ever you need to see more detail of a particular material you can just double click and get a floating window for a particular material which you can subsequently enlarge as well and we'll dismiss that now one of the things as you go from one material to the next here you might notice that the rollout may or may not change let's go down here to these materials here you noticed right here both the rollout and this particular button the material type button uh, has changed the upper row has used a material called an arch and design material and the second row is using pro materials now there's a number of different material types that we'll see or that you'll see as you're working in 3ds max in this course we're going to focus primarily on two material types the arch and design material and the pro material the pro material being the latest and greatest in Max 2009 and if at all possible I would highly recommend that you get a trial version of 2009 because the pro materials are uh, far and beyond the simplest to use. Now there's a whole bunch of materials here which really nothing much has been defined it just looks like a, a gray shiny material and you can see the material type is set to arch and design. If we click on that material type button, another window will pop up, the material and map browser. And uh, I'd like you to notice here, these are all the material types that you have available to you. They are colored differently. And basically the three different colors here one of them we don't really use in architecture, the Direct X shader. Uh, that's for primarily for, for games, which use the uh, Direct X drivers. There are two, the other two, the, the blue spheres here are, call them traditional materials that are used with the scanline renderer in 3ds Max that we are not using uh, in this course and all these yellow materials here are materials that are related to mental ray you're going to encounter from time to time some of these materials one of them that you may encounter is the architectural material that you might get from files that are being imported from uh, AutoCAD or or Revit with the exception of Revit 2009 you might also encounter standard materials from time to time 
And you can use these materials with your mental ray renderings, but again, it's recommended that you use a material which has been designed to work with a mental ray renderer. Now, one caveat about using either Pro Materials or the Arch and Design or any mental ray material is that since they are designed to be used with the mental ray renderer, if ever you turn off the mental ray renderer and go back to the scan line renderer, these materials will not render. So if you ever foresee in a project that that might happen, you would have to stick with either the architectural being your, your next best choice or just a standard material. So let me just repeat a little rundown of the various materials that we have. In Max 2009, you should be using Pro Materials, if at all possible. In addition to being the easiest to use, in the FPX transfer that we did from Revit 2009, Pro Materials are actually being applied or transferred from Revit into 3ds Max 2009. Again, the only place that happens is from Revit 2009 to Max 2009. In Max 9, Max 2008, and Viz 2008, Pro Materials are not available. You would use the Arch and Design material primarily. So I'm going to go ahead and render this scene. Now you'll notice in this rendering there's already some reflections and some highlights from the lights and some shadows from the lights in the scene. There are though some other objects here that I've added recently that are actually just rendering their default color as you see here in the uh, in the viewport. Now it's it's very possible that you'd want to know if um, what material has been assigned to a given object or if it has a material at all. So a couple things that you can do is if you select the object and go to its properties first of all it will identify the material name of an object so in this case here it has no material now if you had been working on this file or if somebody had been working on this file typically there would also be little corners that are highlighted here in the various material slots when a material has been assigned to an object in a scene. Now, just the way I set up this file, that, that isn't the case, but you can always use here this little eyedropper icon and get a material from a particular object. So here I've pulled this material from that object into the material editor and when I click on it, you'll see it has a very generic name here, just 15 default. But now it shows me here in the sample area the material that's being used on that object. 